There is nothing that would make me happier in my entire life than be able to tell the Kitz Millers we know what happened. The scene of the horrific crime was the boot village then, Panera Bread Now, in the Bogey Hills Plaza, just south of I-70 on Zumbel Road. There's not a doubt in my mind if you walked in there and anybody asked what they, this real estate was famous for or infamous for, they wouldn't have a clue. It was a beautiful May afternoon in 1992. Nancy Kitzmiller was working the store alone. She opened the doors at noon and sometime between 2 and 2.30, a serial killer walked in. I feel this guy was very calculated. I, I don't believe he just walked in on a spur of the moment. I think he looked at what he had in front of him. I think he analyzed it. The I-70 serial killer had already struck in Indianapolis, Wichita, and Terre Haute. He would not be finished in St. Charles. Raytown near Kansas City was next. I don't believe he was in either any of the crime scenes very long at all. He was risking too much if he did. And Wichita shows that. In Wichita, a customer walked in on the serial killer after he had shot two female workers. They exchanged words and the customer fled. The serial killer chose to let an eyewitness live rather than risk a louder scene. In the Kitzmiller case, Step believes the killer calmly walked in and walked out. There's a golf course located behind the store. Uh, he could have got away that way, but he didn't. He came out the front. He went in the front and he came out the front. For detectives in each city, what baffled them was how the killer got in and out of each store. There was never a sighting of him nor any vehicle. If we had that vehicle or his mode of transportation, that'd be a very big missing piece in this puzzle. When the killing stopped, six people in five cities were dead in all a month's time. Ballistics tied a gun like this to all the homicides, but then he stopped, or did he? I believe he stopped, I, or maybe a pause, but definitely changed up his routine. He changed up his MO. When the calendar flipped to 1993, similar killings occurred in Texas. Three scenes, two women killed, one miraculously survived, all in small shops right off the interstate. But the ballistics no longer matched. Police could not link the I-70 killer to the Texas crime scenes. Now, nearly 30 years after the killings, a task force is gathering to take their best shot at solving the case. Federal agents, along with detectives from all the cities involved, will pick each other's brains and compare notes. I'm really anxious to hear all the, the ideas, everybody else's thoughts, putting the thoughts together. Uh, technology has changed in 30 years. I'm looking to put all those together so we can come up with a recipe to solve this. For Step, it's a rare day that goes by without thinking about the case and the Kitzmiller family. When I'm thinking about this case and all the leads that have been done and the what ifs and what could we have done or what did we do right and what did we do wrong, there are several times thinking we're a million miles away and there's other times thinking we're very close to getting somewhere on this. Don Stepp is just days away from retirement now. Soon, someone else will take the case that he has carried all these years. There's not a doubt in my mind that someday we will be able to solve this case. There will be answers given to the family and the individual will be identified who's responsible for these crimes.